assigned to the drug task force, then we have three assigned to patrol. Um, all the dogs are dual purpose patrol dogs as well as narcotic detection dogs. There's a dog assigned directly to an officer. That's correct. And they form... This is Ace. He's a, uh, actually a cross between a German Shepherd and Belgian Malinois. He's one of our youngest dogs and he is just a big puppy. We have switched over to the Belgian Malinois dog from a German Shepherd because their medical issues are less than the German Shepherd. So we will get seven to 10 to 11 years out of Belgian oh, Malinois. Wow. So if this is a Malinois spin. Oh yeah? Is that Most Malinois, it, it's because they're so hectic that if they're not worked enough, they, you get dogs that are hectic and uncontrollable. Whenever we get the dogs out, we have to train in new places all the time because they get used to the training facility. I see Zorro over here just looking attentively at his handler while there's a whole lot of fun the, going on. Do you see the uh, toy in his back pocket? Ah. That's what they live for. So he knows that toy's there, and as long as that toy's there, then he's gonna pay attention to the handler. <laughs> Every dog has to be extremely social right. because of a public interaction. The days of the vicious dogs, the perception of killer dogs, yeah. and they're not. When they're done biting you, they will lay in your lap. Because they don't hold animosity to humans. Right. So if you get in a fight with somebody, you're upset with them for a while. The dogs will bite you and then they'll lay in your lap because their job is done. So what is this big thing? That's electronic leash. So if I send him after a bad guy and the bad guy decides to give up, sometimes these dogs get so single-minded and so singularly focused. We use that to interrupt his thought process. I just told you to go bite him. Now I'm telling you to come back to me and not right. bite him. Can you take that collar off and show her what level we work on? I'm sorry, was that a nice way of saying, Kim, do you want to be shocked by the collar? But we, we want to show you the levels okay. that the dogs are worked at. Okay. okay. Right. There you go. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, wow, that is nothing. It's, it's very little. All we need is, is a, a brief interruption in their mind and their brain to get their attention back focused on us. The nice thing about this collar, too, is it has a vibrating function on it, so if you hold it, Oh wow. It vibrates. So if we're searching at a building, Instead of me yelling for him, saying, Zorro, come back to me, and the bat, if there's a bad guy in the building, then he would know where I'm at. I can just hit that, and he knows that I want him. So that's know. actually a command, the it vibrate. Is. Yep, for Zorro and I. Wow. Command. So he knows to come back to me. You are so dang cute. Yeah, let's have him bite someone. Come on. Yeah. Get. Get out of here. Frank will give an order to Bob to stop because the bad guy always has a chance to give up. Right. And if he doesn't, then he'll send the dog on him. You know, it's kind of hard to believe. They are so sweet and lovable, and then you see them do this. And Don't you see the tail? The, the tail's tail wagging. wagging. They're just having a blast. Bad guy gives up, out in recall. So that's the ultimate control that we look for with these dogs. The dogs are trained with positive reinforcement and they are, are given toy reward for every behavior they do. So when they, when they bite somebody in training, uh, the sleeve or the suit that they're biting uh, represents their toy. So everything we train out of is positive reinforcement and they, they work because they enjoy it, they're out of the pleasure, not because they have to. I have had dogs in the past. I can't get mine to sit on command. <laughs> When you put into the obedience and the tracking, which is very time consuming, the patrol work, the bite work, the search work, and the drug work, it comes out to about three months. Now we're going to do what's called a recall. We're going to send the dog after the suspect. The handler is going to realize that the, there's no longer a threat and he's going to recall his dog back. And that's just what he did. And then he goes right back to his handler. Right back to the handler. If the suspect provides a threat again, he can send the dog again. Our main goal with this is to de-escalate a situation. We don't want to hurt somebody. Now, Rob's going to do some tactical movement. He's going to be going up on a, a house or sneaking up on a person, something that we don't want to have somebody know that we're coming up on them. So we have to do this very quietly. He'll move up, take a peek to see if it's clear. We don't want the dogs clear in the corner before we get up there in case there is a threat there that we can't address. Then he'll call Zorro up to him and then he'll move up again. There are times when we're out, if we're doing searches out in the brush, and we will actually send our dogs forward ahead of us if we're looking for somebody. We'll down them, we'll move up to the dog, and then we'll sort of send them up further. Uh, so it works either way. And his reward, everything is reward. reward. We also have a door popper system on our cars. If we're in a fight and we can't get to the car, we can't hit the button on our belt, they'll pop the door out, the dog will come and engage the bad guy with us. No, here! He was going over there! <laughs> 
So he stayed until his handler called him. When he came out, the, he didn't obviously didn't see the scuffle there, and he was coming over here to engage somebody. Um, saw him over the scuffle over there and redirected, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was pushing his handler out of the way so he could engage the bad guy, I'm sure. So you just run your arm all the way in and grab that thing in the end? It's Ow! I feel that. There's nothing in there that's going to hurt you. Yeah, you won't feel hardly any pressure at all. Uh, no, you're a right. You want to paint me? Yeah, someone help me. <laughs> Take care of the head. Oh my god. Good boy. Holy. Am I Mike? Holy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't you, Rob. <laughs> I mean, that's why we can have four officers on one guy and they will fight us. We bring out one dog and they will give up because because of that. They don't want to get bit. Can I pet him now? Uh -huh. Are we friends now? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No, give it to me. Give it to me. You got to me. Sit. Most famous dog, Alec. Uh, he's been with the department since 2007 and just retired in April. Um, I was lucky enough to go to the academy with him. I was a new handler, and uh, Mike was an experienced handler. He was actually going to the training academy with Phoenix. And uh, right away, we kind of knew this dog had something special. He was one of those dogs that was just edgy. And a lot of people, will, you'll, you'll hear say in the canine community, dogs will take on the handler's personality. And when you meet these two guys, it, it, 